All right, everybody, we'll go ahead and get started. I appreciate everybody for uh, for zooming in. I'm going to have to intermittently uh, check the waiting room because even now I've still got seven people uh, waiting to get in. And so as I do that, I appreciate everybody for, for zooming in. Uh, if you don't know me, I recognize some names and faces that's in. Uh, probably a pretty good proportion of you are my students, uh, but some of you aren't. And uh, I'm Will Bolin. I'm a history, one of the history and in, in the government instructor at Northeast Community College. And tonight uh, we welcome Miss Betsy Hamilton. Uh, Miss Hamilton is going to speak about her experience serving on the commission to redesign the uh, state flag. And so before that, let me take care of some quick uh, housekeeping items. I want to recognize the two co-sponsors uh, for tonight's event. Uh, this Zoom session was co-sponsored by the Division of Social Behavioral and Applied Sciences, which is the division that I work in. And it's also co-sponsored by the uh, Civic Learning and Democratic Engagement Committee. That's made up of members of both uh, Northeast uh, faculty and staff. Uh, I do wanna stress before we really get into this that uh, this is uh, informational in nature. This is not, as I've advertised, not uh, intended to try to influence anybody's vote on this uh, uh, referendum or initiative item on the November 3rd ballot is to more talk about the process and, and not why you should vote one way or the other. Um, I have, and I will check this, um, you know, everybody should be muted. Uh, we shouldn't be getting any background noise from anybody, which right now I'm not hearing anything. If you have any questions toward the end, I'll ask anybody, if, if anybody has questions for Miss Hamilton, you can enter that into the chat box. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, you may have to uh, enable that uh, in your toolbar on your screen. Um, and at the end, uh, when we start to wrap up after any questions are asked, there will be a link. I know that some of you, um, some of your instructors are offering credit for, for viewing this tonight, and that link will be distributed and posted in the chat box toward the end. And so you'll just click on the link or copy it and paste it, uh, into your browser and um, you will complete that and it will ask you if you're a student uh, seeking credit from your instructor or ask for the instructor or teacher's names as well. So with all of that introductory information out of the way, let me introduce our uh, guest speaker for tonight, Miss Betsy Hamilton. Uh, Miss Hamilton, uh, quick biographical information, she's a native of Tupelo, Mississippi and a graduate of Tupelo High School. She's also a graduate of the University of uh, Mississippi. She's a former educator in West Memphis, Arkansas, and currently resides in New Albany and is a real estate broker and a, an appraisal there in New Albany. In terms of her past service, uh, she has uh, previously served on the Board of Trustees for the New Albany Public Schools. She served on the Create Foundation in Tupelo, the Unite Foundation of Union County, and one, was one of the founding members or board of directors of the, the Tanglefoot Trail. I'm sure some of y'all are very familiar with that, that runs through Union County, New Albany, um, uh, Pontotoc County, and so forth. Currently, Ms. Hamilton um, serves as a board member for the Union County Heritage Museum. She's a board member of the Mississippi Department of, Ar of Ar Archives and History. She's a member of the Commission on the Future of Northeast Mississippi. And as I previously stated, the reason she's here to talk tonight, she was one of the nine members of the commission to redesign the Mississippi state flag. And then lastly, and maybe actually the, the item that she might, might be most proud of, she's married to her husband, Tom, and has three children and three grandchildren. And so, uh, Ms. Hamilton, let's start tonight off with just talking about uh, the nine member board, whether you wanna you know, mention them directly by name, but how how did those individuals, yourself included, get selected to serve on this on this commission? Well, you know the uh, the legislation um, said that we had to have a nine member board, and the lieutenant, the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker of the house each had three selections. Uh, the lieutenant governor and the speaker could choose theirs at, at large. But the governor, Governor Reeves, had to select his from uh, Mississippi Economic Council, 
uh, Department of Archives and History and Mississippi Arts Commission. So I think I just lucked out. I just happened to be sitting in the right chair, I guess, you know, one of those, the right place, the right time. And um, I had, I had planned an event for him uh, in New Albany back when he was running. I, I guess, you know, he, he knew me and maybe he wanted another person from Northeast Mississippi. So I was delighted that, that, that he selected me. I really was. Uh, there were, I'll tell you, there were, if, if, you, if you don't know, we had, uh, we had Ben Cyrus, who was the chief of the Choctaws, and uh, Frank Bordeaux was from the coast. He represented Mississippi Arts Commission, and Judge Reuben Anderson, who was former uh, Supreme Court Justice from the Jackson area, and then we had um, a community relations specialist for our hospital system on the coast and an attorney, um, president of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College and the mayor of Oxford and um, a policy advisor for uh, Speaker Gunn. So we had a really, uh, I think, great selection, cross-section of, of, you know, interested people from, from throughout the state. Do you want me just to move on? Well, I was uh, I was going to mention uh, how this commission came about. Uh, I was just still admitting a couple more students, actually. And so, you know, there may be some misconceptions, and maybe we can clear some of that up tonight, misconceptions on how this got started and, and what the commission, what y'all's group's limitations were. And so how – and then I'll, I'll, I'll give background information on this House Bill 1793 – and, and that's what really made this official. And then I'll hand it off to you. But, you know, I actually pulled up a copy of House Bill 1793 that, that made it through the legislature, was approved and signed by the governor, Governor Reeves. And that, what's the interesting part of that, for those of y'all that are watching or listening in, is the interesting part of that House Bill is that under um, uh, the, the Section 5, it's under Section 5 that actually repealed Section, now this is going to sound like a lot of a gibberish, but Section 5 repealed Section 3-3-16 of the Mississippi Code of 1972, and that means nothing to most of you, but that is the point in which the old flag was repealed. And so it's this House bill, for those of y'all that may be confused, it wasn't the commission that uh, that, that did away with the flag and said that we shall choose another. It was the House bill passed by the legislature and signed or approved by the governor. That was in Section 5. And so it's House Bill 1793 that established this commission that Mr. Hamilton was on with eight other individuals. It said who could select each of the three individuals, three, three, and three. And it, it outlined the limitations, and this is where I'll hand it off to you, Ms. Hamilton, it set the limitations on what could not be included on y'all's recommendations and it included what it had to had to have or include. So, so with that, can you talk about that for a little bit? What, what, were, what were your limitations as a group? Well, the limitations were that um, the flag could not include uh, the Confederate symbol, the old, the old flag. Uh, in any part of the flag of the new flag of the new design, and it had to include the words "In God We Trust." And so, it's also in that House bill. Let me make sure I'm not muted. It's also in that House bill. Uh, in Section One, it says to quote it. It says the new flag or the new design. The new design for the Mississippi State flag shall honor the past while embracing the promise of the future. And so when you get into that, you know, and I may be butchering this term, but y'all had flag professionals known as, and correct me if I'm saying this wrong because I don't have the term in front of me, vexologists, those who study, uh, is it vexology? Is that how you say it? That, vexologist. It's, it's right. kind of a twister, but it's a we're gonna vexel. Call, we're going to call them flag experts. 
And so that's good. And so y'all had, and maybe it was just more than one. You had flag experts come in and, 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 and give their recommendations. What, what did they have to offer on that? Well, at, uh, at 75, it was great to add a new word to my vocabulary. And that was a, a really neat thing, but I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a visual learner. So I really enjoyed this part of, of serving on the commission. So the first thing, uh, we had Clay Moss, and he's from Jackson. So we had him available for us. And he is a vexillologist. And those are your flag enthusiasts. And, um, you know, at, well, they're flag geeks. They really are. And so they gave us, uh, uh, Clay had a, uh, th this is a, a primer, and I know it's backwards, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to uh, get off and and, uh, and do my screen share. But this is a book. Can you see it? It's uh, Good Flag, Bad Flag, How to Design a Great Flag. And so with with these, these are these are the principles that we that we went by in in selecting. But uh, so five principles and keep in mind that principles are they're not rules, they're not laws, they're guidelines and guidelines, you know, you can you can tweak them. But we just need to be careful and have a purpose, you know, when you do. There are exceptions. And, um, and we did kind of do that. Uh, first of all, because the legislature said that, you know, gave us some limitations and we had to include, had to include those. But um, five good principles for flag design. Keep it simple. And that means usually try to use one element. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you would think, well, it's, if it's, is it simple enough that a child could draw it from memory after they've seen it? You know, if we can do that, it's pretty simple. And, uh, and then take into consideration when you're thinking about the simplicity that a flag not only flies, but it, it hangs, it flaps, it drapes, and so we wanted to take into consideration how it's going to look in those, you know, different different situations. Um, use meaningful symbolism, and I will tell you early on. Um, there's a a gardener uh, in um, in Mississippi, and 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 he was there. Uh, talking to us about the importance of the magnolia. And you all know, I guess you do, that, you know, of course, we are the magnolia state. Uh, it's been on our uh, state welcome, highway welcome signs. It's on our state quarter, if you have one of those. It's... Uh, it's been on our, it is on top of all of our historic markers. And so, and then, you know, when you think about your interchanges on the highways, the, the magnolias that line our highways, that are on our interchanges, that are in our yards, in every city, in every county throughout the state, we've used it everywhere we could except on our flag. And um, when, when Felder, Felder Rushing told us that, I, when I went to Jackson, I didn't have the magnolia really in my mind. I knew that we needed to select a new flag that needed to be different, outstanding, and recognized. So, but after that, it really kind of just sowed the seed for me. And, and I came home really thinking seriously about having a, a magnolia as the symbol for the, in the flag. So, um, 
And this, that was before we even began to see, see the designs. Use two or three basic colors. And uh, you'll see, I'm gonna show you a few samples and you'll see what the common thread was. Uh, use two or three basic colors. And, and, and I just have to tell you that red, white, and blue is, is just so predominant in everybody's mind throughout the state. That was the, those were the predominant colors. Um, no lettering and no seals. So the lettering is one of those little exceptions to the best principles. And the reason that, that words are not good on flags is because they're hard to read from a distance. And they are backwards on the other side. So um, they... Um, They, they're not reversible easily, you, you, you know that, just as I'm showing you these. Um, and uh, seals, um, and we did have a lot of seals. And uh, I think our, what was our last flag? The bicentennial, bicentennial. The bicentennial flag has a seal on it with, I think, red, white, and blue stripes. Uh, a lot of people lo love that flag, but seals are made to, are designed, you know, they're very intricate. And so from a distance, you can't see the small things. Um, it's hard to, to determine one state seal, you know, from another, and they really are designed to be flat. You see them a lot on stationery. We see them on certificates and things like that. But, um, they highly recommend that you don't use a seal on on a flag. Not very, and they you know are not are not very effective, and they all look very similar from a distance. And I'm gonna use my notes if y'all don't mind, so I can kind of stay on task because Will's got me timed. Um, and also, you wanted it to be distinctive and um, different. And I don't know if any of you have looked at all of the state flags together. Um, if you do, you will, I know there's a graphic out there that just shows all state flags. The predominant color is blue and it's predominantly a blue field. Um, so I didn't want a blue, a blue flag. Uh, that's kind of how I began to, you know, in the selection process. But um, you want it to be so that I, I just had this vision in my mind that, um, that we needed to have a flag that if they were all lined up down Pennsylvania Avenue, a child or anybody could easily pick out the Mississippi flag. So be distinctive and make it and make it different. Um, <clears throat> so my method of selection started with the that solid solid field. Um, well, let me tell you first. We um, the selection process was open until August the first, and we had to be finished by September the second. We had over 3,000 designs that we had to look through. And, and there were actually more than those, but Archives and History um, went through and eliminated those that didn't meet those requirements of not having the Confederate emblem and then having the words, In God We Trust. So those were eliminated first, and we had to work with around 3,000. So I spent a full weekend. I just, I just locked down and, and went through all of them. They were posted on the website for the Department of Archives and History for us to see. And um, we began to, our, our first charge was to, from those 3,000, 
to select our top 25. And uh, it was kind of like that we were going shopping. We had a little heart. And uh, as we went through, just scroll through them, we could, you know, click the heart and it went, that flag then went into our basket. And so for me, um, the first round was, um, I eliminated red, white, and blue stripes because that was the old flag. I eliminated the blue fields. I eliminated the words. Uh, we had a lot of, of designs that had, you know, the Mississippi, you know, the swirly um, italicized logo, Mississippi. We had a lot of those, so we eliminated those. Um, and then... Um, I and the shields, the shields were eliminated first. Um, I liked, because I wanted to do something different, totally different from what we had, but I was going to focus on a magnolia, but I liked the green and white flags. And uh, actually, I, I didn't even think about that coming home until I was talking to my son, who is, um, a business consultant in Atlanta, and, and he was saying something about when he thinks about Mississippi as a child, he always thinks of green. And I said, really? And he said, yeah. And uh, he said, you know, our tags used to be green and white, and Mississippi is written green. And so that kind of sowed a seed. I said, well, okay, I'll, I'll think green and white. Um, and we had some wonderful designs that were that were green and white with the magnolia, and I'll show you one. Um, so that was how I eliminated mine and got to my top top twenty five. Um, we had close to over two thousand of the designs featured a magnolia in some form. So that was pretty defining to us in that of all of the selections, we had that many magnolias. And, you know, we all felt like that we, that we were charged to find a design that um, could move us forward as a state that, did um, represent our, our past and uh, would be great, you know, going, going forward. And so, uh, let's see, after, after, so, so we each had 25, but we only, and that if, if everybody had, had 20, uh, 25 that weren't, you know, du duplicated, we would have had about uh, 200, 225, I think, something like that. But we only ended up with about 150. So from that 150, and uh, from that 150, we selected um, our top 10. And the 150 were on the department's website for people. I don't know if any of y'all looked at that and, and, um, and went through the process, but they were all on the website. And so the public could go and view those and, and, and vote for, for their favorites. And so, and they did the same thing. They, um, So from the so from the 150 that we all selected, we had to select our our top 10, and um, only the top 10 flags with the highest totals advanced to the next round. And let me say that while um, the public was voting, people could vote several times, but 
the department had uh, had a group that was filtering um, the votes with only uh, one IP address. I mean, uh, the same IP address could only vote one time in 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 each round, and we had a lot of uh, people who were you know, using two or three computers in their offices and laptops and iPhones and whatever. But only one IP address was um, was counted. So, so Ms. Hamilton, um, related, um, related to that, can you talk about, and you were probably going to get to this, but I know there was a lot of concern, and we've talked about this, about people from outside of the state able to go into the Archives and History website and vote and you you clarified to me at least how how that was kind of sorted out and i know that was a major source of not really controversy but a lot of people thought well you may have people from massachusetts or california helping decide how our state how mississippi's flag is uh can you talk a minute about that how that kind of got filtered out well yes but i mean that was how it was, was filtered was looking at the ip address but you know, there are a lot of Mississippians that don't live, well, who love Mississippi, who are from here and don't live here that participated in the process. So I think as far as getting the public involved, I, th I think the process worked well because um, let me just, I'm gonna show you a few of the things that we saw uh, early on. Can you see that? Yes, that's uh, you can good. See, uh, you see the Lone Star. I also filtered those out because they reminded me of Texas. And you can see the ones that are similar to the old flag, all the red, white, and blue. And then you can see the, uh, you know, the new graphics designs. Uh, we had a lot of that. And, um, and then these are kind of the, the, the magnolias that were very stylized, but you can see this one up here kind of is, is very similar to what we got, but you can see also that this is not the same magnolia that, that, that we used. Um, but we also, we also had, um, while well, we had clay working with us on, on, um, on the, on the best principles to use. We also had a graphic designer who was on contract. And so during the process, like the Magnolias, if we had a flag, that a design that we liked, but we didn't like that particular symbol in it, we had the flexibility to pull uh, the symbol from another flag and and put it into another design. And, uh, and we did that. That's how we came up with the flag that we, you know, that's, that was the final flag. So um, we used the polls as just kind of a guide to us to kind of let us know that, you know, what people liked and what they didn't like. And uh, as we as we went through that process, and we we got to um, to the top. Nine, well, we were supposed to get to twelve, and uh, I guess in one of our meetings, we uh, we eliminated one, and we and we got to nine. And I'm gonna show you the top nine, and you can also see how what the percentage was. Of the of the vote, and I wish this was another way. But can y'all can you can you see that? All right, this is the this is the flag that 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 we have. This is the same design, but it has a white field, and it has the blue the red and blue bars, and uh, and then this one was was popular. It's the, it's, the, it's the river. A lot of people like that. Um, these two are, are similar, but that, there's that green that pops up. 
the blue flag was was polling high and 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 this one was uh was i mean higher for these two for this style um and then here's a green one this flag was very popular this is the one that had the uh the river and this and the um edge of the state kind of the gulf edge and of course this is the shield and this is a green and white magnolia so we had these nine and we were to decide on the top five from these not from, from these nine so the process was this was the flag that was polling extremely high and what we began to realize is that um, all of our magnolias were competing against each other so we we combined these the the blue was polling higher than the green so we eliminated the green we eliminated this one because it was polling only 3.7 percent and think about the shield was polling at 25 percent um this design and this design were very similar um as as this one so we took the top the top designs um and you'll see how we compiled the top five the top five here they are the top five were going to be were made into flags so that we could see them flying because they look different you know when they're when when they're hanging when they're just draped around the pole when they're flying than when they went than when they're flat and so from the top from these after we saw them flying uh, we we had to we were supposed to pick one from from these five but when we realized that this one and this one were the highest and they were polling together higher than the shield we we wanted to have two going head to head rather than just picking one because we really wanted to see how the polling would do against the shield even though the shield was so was polling so high but keep in mind that 60 percent just close to 60 percent of the entries submissions had a magnolia on it and for a flag to we just felt like that keeping it simple with something that re that says who we are as a state and so many submissions had the magnolia that we really needed to have a magnolia on the on the state flag and so we put we put this one head to head with this to see what happened because this one and this one were out polling this one and 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 this one was very popular but the one thing about this one uh that showed the line of the state is that on the back side now to keep in mind what i said you know about the words that you can't you can't read them on the back side well on the flip side of this flag was alabama and so and and then people seeing uh louisiana here the first time i saw this i saw louisiana before i saw mississippi and so that was how we eliminated that um okay so the top two um the shield 
and the new magnolia. Um, now, did, and, y'all, did y'all come, or was there, you were talking about the designer that can make changes if y'all wanted, and that, compared to how that, the current proposal is, the, the yellow vertical bars, the, the stripes on each side, those were widened at some point, right? They were what? Widened, widened, made yeah, better. I, yeah, let, I'll tell you that in just a minute. But let me show you this. You see the star on the shield? Another element that was that was very um, there was a lot of sentiment for was the circle of stars. The circle of stars. Um, we saw that on a lot of submissions, and and that was you know that was very meaningful. Um, the stars represent the twenty states you know, miss, uh, the 20 states, and Mississippi as the 20th state. Well, with 20, you don't have an even number going around. The one at the top, we pulled this one from the top. Uh, we pulled this, we pulled the five-pointed star, the diamond star, from this design to represent the first peoples. Um, Chief Ben Cyrus, you know, called it to our attention that the diamond star is very significant with them. It's a, and so here it was and uh, in this design. So we used that one star to represent our Native Americans. And that was a design from another flag. And so, um, he gets credit for having input to to this to this design that we that we came up with. So in um, in um, heraldry, there is a t- uh, coats of arms and, and uh, things like that. As with flag. When two colors, red and blue and green and purple or whatever, you, you don't, you, you separate them with a, with a metal and, and metals were gold and silver. And so in, in, in flags, the gold and silver translate to yellow and white. That makes sense. The gold and the silver, the metals, and then with flags that translates into yellow and white. So the design that we, I'll show you this one because this is the one that has the, this was the design. And you can see that the final is this. And you can see that the, the gold is wider and the blue is narrow because what happens is each, each section has to be scaled so that when the flag is, uh, is minimized, is smaller to be on uh, like a little stick flag or it's huge you know, then it's got to scale properly so that each each element is, um, it's not just a skinny line on the big flag. It's got to be in proportion. And that's how Clay helped. You know, he he told us what had to happen with this. This is not... The, this was not the commission deciding. This was the flag guy deciding. And so it's, it's like, you know, this, this kind of design is like the Canadian flag, you know, with the maple leaf in it. And um, so when people ask about 
And I've seen a lot of comments, you know, about, oh, I wish they didn't have the gold in it. Well, you have to have something to separate the blue and the, um, because it's got that blue field to separate the, the, the red and the blue. Well, if you put white here, the magnolia and the stars are going to lose their pop. And so that's why this yellow bar is there, the gold. And the gold is the same as the gold stamen in the magnolia. So that's basically how we arrived, you know, at the design that we did. It was just, it was, a, it was just a great, I think, culmination and, and of, of people working together with the, with the designs that we had. Um, the one thing that I, in hindsight, I wish that the designers that the people who submitted had known more about what we learned from the vexillologist about, you know, don't submit one that has, that has the seal on it. And, you know, don't, uh, you know, don't submit the words. I don't, nobody knew that going, you know, going in. And so we had a lot of those. And then maybe if the graphic designers had known that they might have come up with with something else. So, um, but I mean, there was a lot of creative, a lot of creative things. The um, the ones that had the river on them, the river, uh, you know, coming down the edge of the state. Curvy lines are hard um, to. Uh, to print on, on, on flags. I think the bigger they get, the, hard, the more difficult they are. So there were little things like that that we used to, to eliminate, and I'm sure that, you know, people wonder why. But most of the time, there was, there was a reason. So um, as much as I like the green and white, it didn't get very far. But... I, I sort of thought that, you know, it would be great when we got down to the five to have five very distinct choices for people to, to vote on. And um, I think we did. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll say I was a little partial myself of the, uh, of the green one. There was two that maybe made the top ten or whatever. And I, I Were you? I kind of like. Oh gosh, that. well, I like that. <laughs> I didn't make the cut, and so all right. So, so where that brings us at now is 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 the the commission, the group that you were a part of, has has done their job and they've made a a proposal, and then it goes to the ballot, it goes to the November third ballot, and I recognize that that of these these seventy four people that are zooming in, a lot of them, this is going to be their first first time to vote, right? Uh, freshmen, sophomore age students, college students, have never voted before. And so real quick, before we, we see if anybody has any questions, I want to I give this a try. So if I share my screen, um, it's going to let me. Don't think it's going to let me. Um, all right. Can you, can you see the ballot? Can you see what I'm mirroring on my screen? Yes. Okay. All right. So for those of y'all that never voted before, this is a, a sample ballot that, that I pulled from the Secretary of State's office. And so as is typical, the ballots will start, you know, whether it's a paper version, this would be an example of a paper version of the ballot. A lot of y'all will be going to, to your county precincts, voting precincts, and you'll have the, what's called the die bulb machine and you'll enter the car and it's a touch screen. And so no matter what the version of the ballot is, electronic or paper ballot, it's going to start off with the federal elections. And so the first option that you're going to have to select from, if you want to select an option, is this president. And then it works its own way. It works its way down to, to other federal elections, uh, state level, any, you know, depending on where you live, any municipal or county or local elections. 
And then this election, 2020, is unique. You know, it's a rarity that we have items like this to change the Constitution, to select a flag, referendums, initiatives. It's rare. And then dang 2020, we've got three of them, right, over the med uh, medical marijuana to change the Constitution, ballot measure number two, and then ballot me measure number three shows you the image of the commission's proposed flag and by because House Bill 1796 says just requires simple majority. It's not two thirds, it's not three fourths, it's not any of those fractions that we sometimes talk about in government class. It's, it's a simple majority. And so it gives the people the option on whether to accept or reject the commission's proposal. And so uh, Ms. Hamilton, you know, if hypothetically it's rejected, Y'all get to start all over, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, is that basically right. the, the gist of it? You get to start the whole process over. And uh, and it would have to come up. Now, I don't know. You may can clarify this. Would it go before a special election or just the next regular election cycle? I don't know. Uh, I don't think we've gone there yet. Yeah. Just see what happens in, in less than 10 days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me let me tell you this uh, for those of you who are getting uh, credit for that. Another word we learned was fimbriation, and a fimbriation that is what that's that gold bar. That's the gold line that separates. That's the metal, the gold and the silver, that separates the the two distinct colors. And uh, I thought that was really interesting so if anybody asks well i wish they would take off the gold tell them that that's a embryation and it needs to be there so even though it sounds like a medical procedure of some kind it uh, yeah. relates to flags and it would make you sound sophisticated by dropping that term right all right well and i will tell go, go ahead i will tell you too that um the early flags that you see flying, I know, I think Bancroft South has one in Chipolo that's, that's flying. And I, you know, I personally feel that it, it looks so good with the American flag. I, I really do. While I was opposed, I'm not opposed, but I, you know, was leaning towards something different with the, with the green and white. I think the red, white, and blue on this flag looks just handsome and stunning flying together. Um, and um, the blue and the red are not your true old glory that when the, when the, when the flags are, if the flag passes and um, the new, the new ones that will be printed will be that bold old glory red and blue that are on the American flag. And the reason for that is because the ones that were printed now are, are less expensive uh, to, um, to screen print. And the screen printed ones will have the, the, uh, the, blue, and the, the blue and the red will be the same. Uh, the, the, the ones that we have now are, are digitally printed. And so you don't get that true red and blue so if in, you know if you've seen that and noticed that once the red's kind of purplish and the blue is you know kind of bright blue or something it it won't those won't be the colors or should be yeah we uh we have a question we'll take one question and, and since we're running at about 45 minutes we'll uh okay. we'll answer this question and then I'll, I'll tell the students what they need to do for the credit part of this but uh, I've got a question that says, uh, how did y'all decide how to add the words since it can be difficult to read? Now, my assumption in reading that question, I'm thinking maybe she, she's meaning the the size, the font, whatever. You know, you don't want to bring so much attention to it, but also you got to be able to read it from some kind of a, a distance. So, I mean, how did y'all, I guess what the question is, how did y'all decide how big or small the wording is, uh, meaning well, in God do we trust? Okay, we actually looked at that several different several different ways. Um, in the in the on the 
you notice that it's part of the circle of stars. And so when uh, Clay Moss put the circles in and they had to have enough space and whatever, we had just enough room to do in God we trust. So we also uh, looked at the circle without in God we trust in the circle and just at the bottom. We looked at it that way. But it just looked better for it to be part of the circle. And so it's just proportion to, to fit there. And um, we did, we had, we had, we, we looked at several fonts and Clay guided us in that, in that selection. And really and truly, I, I, I happened to be in the flag shop um, in a uh, flag store in Jackson when he came in to see the sample, the, the ones that were, had, were coming in. And I think he actually was talking with the owner about that font and it might be changed just a little tweaked somehow so that it's a little bolder maybe. All right. Well, that was a good question. Um, for Tom, yeah, since we're running at 50 you. minutes, um, probably for Tom's sake, being conscious of that, uh, we'll, we'll kind of put a, start to put a bow on this. Uh, Ms. Hamilton, we do appreciate your time uh, talking to our students, answering questions and, and getting them a little bit more prepared for, for what they're going to see when they vote uh, in less than 10 days on November the 3rd. Uh, so like I told somebody the other day, you know, we've got so much to vote for at the federal and state level and flag and uh, marijuana and all this other, we got enough stuff to vote on in this election that if we don't see record number of voter turnout, I think we're looking at a whole different realm of serious voter problems uh, in this state or in this country. And so uh, we do encourage people to vote. Uh, with that said, uh, let me switch over to my iPad. So for those if of y'all, go ahead. If you want to see it flying, drive down to Tupelo in front of the, uh, the headquarters at, Bank of, at uh, Bank Corp South. It looks great. Okay. Um, Thank so, y'all. Yeah, we, we appreciate it. Uh, if I can get this to cooperate, I will give you the link. Give me just one second. I thought I had it lined up. All right. There we go. All right. So it should be a direct link. I will recommend to you to, to go ahead and do that tonight. All right. Go ahead and fill this out tonight. If you're getting credit recognition for attending this or whatever, be sure to include your instructor's names. Uh, if they said you're not getting credit, don't try to plug their name in there anyway and get away with something. So uh, with that said, appreciate everybody for, for showing up. 74 looks like the, uh, the number that we've got Miss Hamilton zooming in. That's, I think that would, that would probably beat most people's expectations on what to expect on something uh, as far as a Zoom format like this. Uh, with that said, students, go ahead and fill that out uh, before you log off or whatever. Uh, it may become unavailable for you tomorrow. And uh, we appreciate everybody's time. Thank you, Miss Hamilton.